sun, sand, surf, the essential ingredients for a beach holiday. Now, I could be in any exotic destination around the world, Hawaii, Thailand, the Caribbean. But believe it or not, we're in China. Hainan. It's hard to believe that this lush tropical paradise, less than 50 kilometers off the Chinese coast, was once known as the end of the earth a place for political exiles until as late as the early 50s. Today, it's no longer isolated from the capital, now just a four-hour plane ride from Beijing. With direct flights from most other major cities into Haikou and Sanya, there's also a ferry and train service from the mainland. The contestants arrived in China But many here say the turning point was in 2003, when the Miss World contest was staged at the Sheraton Hotel in Sanya, an event that put it on the map. It's being called China's Hawaii, partly because it's on the same latitude, and it's the only place in China where you'll find palm trees with coconuts. In just five years, Hainan has become a resort destination. Yalong Bay is awash with large international brand hotels. Nearby golf courses are a boon for Korean visitors, and the public beaches in the south are popular with the Russians. Last year, 16 million tourists visited the island, but only half a million were foreigners. That's relatively small in comparison to the four million international tourists that visited Beijing alone. If we don't include Hong Kong, Taiwan and Macau, the overseas tourists in Hainan only account for a small percentage. But Russian and Korean tourists have increased a lot recently. Koreans are still our number one overseas market. Still majority of visitors are from the mainland, mostly expats working in China, many of whom come here, believe it or not, to learn to surf. Um, well, I do surf lessons for two hours, um, which is 350 RMB, and that includes board usage for the day. Brendan Sheridan has recently started surf lessons and safaris, recognizing a niche market that's yet to be tapped. I've had about 70 customers over the past three months, and mostly they were expats living in China who found my website and uh, shot down here for the weekend from Guangzhou or Beijing or Shanghai. Um, it does surprise a lot of people that there is surf in China. And it's not, it's not world-class surf, it's nothing like Hawaii or Indonesia, but it's definitely decent surf. During the fall and winter we get pretty consistent four to six to eight foot swells and uh, there are plenty of breaks on the east coast where it's just completely empty and so you can go and just surf by yourself and a few friends and it's, it's, it's quite an interesting experience to, to surf in China. Brendan is based in Sanyo, but we journeyed with him to Haiko in the north to meet Hiroshi and Baijia, a couple who have been running surfing safaris, mainly for Japanese clients, for the last few years. They've established Hainan's first surfboard making factory, and it's where Brendan gets most of his boards. The boards here are made from scratch. From shaping and fin design for short boards to mouths. These, these fins are actually really quite close together. That's where maybe on another four fin, that fin would be there and this one would be maybe a little further up. Right. It's just as well because if you aren't linking up with a surf school, it's best to bring everything with you to Hainan, like your wax, rash vest and board, as there are no surf shops on the island. Together we head towards Wenchang on the eastern coast in search of waves. Brendan assures me conditions here are perfect for beginners. After I master the pop-up, we hit the water. Fortunately for me, September wasn't the season for large waves, and I finally managed to stand up. Trust me, that's no mean feat.
Monran also organises an annual surf competition. Hiroshi gave me some video footage filmed in Hainan in the past few years, showing that there are definitely some decent waves to be found. We know that we need to learn more from Bali and Hawaii and other famous international places to promote more water sports such as skiing and surfing and we are now doing a feasibility study on this subject. Also we are thinking of opening up some international port and yacht clubs in Sanya to promote tourism. Even without government backing, at present surfing in China is becoming increasingly popular. Best times to come are during the winter season, where northeast swells can be found on beaches on the eastern part of the island. During the summer months, south-facing beaches are better. There's of course the prospect of typhoons in summer, which could of course sometimes mean bigger waves, but it's a little unpredictable.